When it comes to finger exercises on the guitar, for years I was always pretty harsh about the pinky. I would say that your pinky is essentially the last pick of the dodgeball team and can tend to be the weakest link compared to your other fingers. And while that's still true, there is another finger that can tend to be a weak link from time to time, and it's often overlooked. Oh, and be sure to stick around till the very end of the lesson because I've got a free gift for you and your guitar that you're both gonna love. So check this out. You know how when it comes to finger exercises, often you're doing stuff like the spider walk, right, or maybe running a major scale, for example. All right, but what's happening is you're doing these single, like one note at a time patterns, which are great because you're moving in this sort of linear way. But when we're doing another common move on guitar, let's say moving from the G chord to the C chord, take a look at what my ring finger is doing, or my third finger, right? When I start here and then I move to the C chord and back, it's making quite a big leap. It's going from like the A string here over to the high E string. And if you're trying to do that, you know, a little faster, like. It's important that when you're playing a chord progression like that, that you're in time, that you have solid rhythm. So you gotta really rely on the movement of your fingers to make that happen. So we've established that in moves like that, that ring finger tends to do a whole lot more work sometimes than the other fingers. And it doesn't always feel like that third finger is really up for the task. And to drive the point home even further, check this out. Let's do this little exercise together. Just take your hand, put it on the top of your guitar here, and then just isolate each finger. Starting with your first finger, just do like that, right? Notice how it happens, no problem. Same thing with ring finger here. Pinky does it pretty good. Now let's try the third finger. It's taken a lot more mental energy for me to get it to move. You know, compared to these other ones, they just can kind of go, right? But the third finger, it's like not as stable. I'm not sure why that is. I don't know if that's like a physical thing that all human beings encounter, but all I know is that in my personal experience and from what I've seen from other guitar players, sometimes that ring finger can actually be more of a weak link than the pinky. And that's inspired this exercise that I would say is your number one finger exercise for guitar because it is meant to get that third finger in proper shape. So check this out, right? What we're gonna do is we're gonna do a spider walk kind of uh, framework here, right? So between the fifth fret and the eighth fret on the G string, right? We're gonna keep our fingers in this position here because we're actually gonna be traversing between both E strings, the low E string and the high E string. So we're gonna do something like this, right? Starting with your first finger, you're gonna bring it all the way up here to the fifth fret of the low E string. And you're gonna pick the note. You wanna make sure you, you pick it nice and clear. Then you're gonna bring it all the way down to the high E string. So it's these, this little octave thing. You know, uh, you can even uh, kind of uh, try to adapt it to one of your favorite songs or favorite riffs that uses an octave, like, uh, like My Sharona or something, right? <laughs> you know, if you just wanted to have fun with it, you could do that. Or if you can do maybe Immigrant Song. No, you know what? That's not a good idea. Don't do Immigrant Song. Okay, <laughs> it's way too hard, way too fast. So, but th that's, that's the gist of the exercise, right? It's important that you're able to traverse the fretboard with this range of motion, right? But you gotta make sure you're actually able to pick the strings, right? Pick the notes. And then you're gonna do the same with your middle finger. Now notice how the other fingers are staying like motionless. It's like we just glued them to the fretboard right there on the G string, right? And then now we're reaching the third finger. Ooh, this one just feels the most awkward so far. Definitely has more, it's definitely more of a struggle. <laughs> just, man, and also, I can feel tension really build up just from my third finger doing that, my ring finger, right? When my index finger and my middle finger were doing it, it was fine. I felt like I could just keep doing that, you know? No problem, but then once the third finger comes in, it's like, ooh, man, it really is out of shape compared to the others. Now, moving on to the pinky. Just fine, right? Definitely uh, more agile than my third finger here. And I don't think, my, my ring's not heavy. It's not like my ring is weighing my finger down compared to the other ones. Obviously, I was having this issue pre-wedding ring, right? So it's something that just, 
that just permeates. If it doesn't, if, if it isn't uh, addressed directly, right, with an exercise like this, then that third finger of yours can continue to be a weak link. And you don't want it, especially when it comes to doing simple things like pivoting chords. Now, obviously with this exercise, as far as pacing, like start slow, like I was a little overzealous and was just kind of rushing through it just to demonstrate it. But you want to find a pace that's comfortable for you, right? If you're going to do the My Sharona thing, you know, just find a, as long as you're playing those notes clearly, it doesn't have to be fast. It's not about speed, right? This is about precision. This is about making sure that we're, right? Picking those uh, strings and making sure that that finger can make that movement, right? And, and like this movement here is not too far off from that movement from the G chord to the C chord, right? So that's what this is doing. It's targeting a, a, a move that we can like, realistically run into when we're playing. It's not like you're expecting to play some kind of crazy lick that involves a leap like this, right? Mm -hmm. But what, what we're doing is we're building the, you know, the strength in that finger and the agility so that when we're pivoting chords, particularly this is where it's really gonna be helpful, when we're changing chords. We wanna make sure that all of our fingers are on a level playing field so that they're all able to do whatever moves that we demand of them, right? Uh, not only accurately, but also in time and with rhythm, because we're trying to play songs a lot of the time. We're not just trying to freeform, you know, just play something with no sense of timing to it, right? So that it's important that we're able to rely on our fingers to do exactly what we need them to at the exact time we need them to. If you start adding this finger exercise to your daily practice routine, I can guarantee you that you're gonna notice a difference in the way that you pivot chords. And this is the kind of exercise that doesn't require a whole lot of thought. You can just sit on your couch, watch TV, and just do this, right? Make sure you're also picking the notes too. So I was kind of speeding through it, but you gotta make sure that, right? Cause we're talking about precision. So if you wanna do the My Sharona thing, you know, make sure you do that. And only move on from finger to finger when you're able to clearly hear both of those octaves. And now you know the number one finger exercise on guitar that is going to get that ring finger in shape and make it just as reliable as your other fingers. And even though it's really gonna show up in helping you pivot chords, it is also gonna come in handy when it comes to playing solos. And speaking of which, do you wanna learn how to finally play guitar solos all across the fretboard in the most simple, concise, and straightforward way possible? Well, don't worry, your pal Eddie's got you covered. You remember that free gift I was telling you about? Well, here it is. This right here is a free lesson on how to solo in any key. You are literally gonna go from not knowing how to do it to doing it and doing it well in a very short amount of time. And it is 100% free and it is yours today. Just click here to claim your copy or check the link in the description box. Sometimes we can go for years and years playing guitar without realizing that there is something in our very hands that's holding us back. And that's exactly why using targeted exercises like we learned today is the perfect remedy.